All right, perfect. Okay, so uh, the title is pretty self-explanatory. You know what you're getting here. So save paper, save time, digital answer entry during in-person labs, a pilot study. So what you're about to see is a result of, you might guess it, a pilot study. So I am going to frame the problem, and you may not think there is a problem here, but if you spend a lot of time in labs, trust me, there's a problem with the traditional way we do labs, which is that students come in and they get a, a pile of paper and they fill out the pile of paper and they give it to you and you mark the pile of paper. And that obviously has significant environmental impacts. It takes a long time to mark, which creates a delay to get it back, and we both lose papers, right? And when I say a long time, I worked it out as probably something like 10 to 15 hours a week I was spending uh, just, you know, checking boxes that I could have spent developing materials, interacting, supporting people in more meaningful ways. We're talking, uh, you know, roughly two to 3,000 pages a year, even if we're double, uh, even if we're doubling up. I lose the papers, they lose the papers, and of course, it takes at least a week till you get that paper back. You get it in, you hand it back next time, but even within the class, they're not getting feedback on what they're doing. If they get something wrong, they don't know it's wrong until the following week. So I am a big proponent of, uh, of running the lab as a mastery-based uh, uh, environment where the goal is not to, to test anyone, but to develop a skill and to create mastery, which is then tested at the end of, of the, the course, right? Uh, if you are doing a mastery-based approach, it means that you've got to have timely feedback. You've got to know if you're getting better so you can move on to the next stage of whatever skill you're developing. I'm also a big proponent of of formative assessment. I saw a lot of these great presentations on using things like clickers or these scratch off things to give that immediate engagement to invoke the uh, to invoke the testing effect to help retain memory, et cetera, et cetera. And so I started thinking back as far as 2018, is there a way that I could utilize this in, in class by uh, creating a, a digital format for the entry of answers, which could then be auto graded in some cases where it is just a right, wrong, factual question. And so I, I tried to do this in 2018, and to be perfectly frank, I just couldn't figure out how to do the software. I was trying to do it through our LMS, and I just, I got overwhelmed, and I, uh, and I stopped. I gave up on it. Um, then, of course, the pandemic came along, which meant that everything had to go online. Which meant we had to figure out a way to do what I really wanted to do before, which was to create a digital uh, format for entry. Now, of course, this was for entirely digital labs. So we rolled it out, and I presented this in 2021. We rolled it out in a uh, in a format where every component was digital. We used digital uh, models for uh, for the specimens, etc. But I was able to take those skills then of how to develop and how to do answer answer entry and take it back into the classroom. And a lot of us are discovering that you know skills that we developed in the digital in the digital crisis moment we can bring back, and they're actually you know that we're we're leveraging learning gains out of that. So this is what a traditional lab might have looked like. This is for uh, igneous rocks, and you can see, you know, you've got uh, you've got a you know step by step. We go through the uh, igneous textures and uh, and uh, uh, and then uh, you know going further on, you have to start applying them, and you're working with individual samples from our our rock kits. So that's what one of the labs would have looked like. So I adapted uh, I adapted. Uh, five of our labs and three of them I adapted just really close, essentially just digitized the traditional format. The other two, I, I started adding some a little bit of media into them, uh, et cetera. But the main thing is that I built feedback into all of these labs, as well as just allowing the actual marking process to be done in a digital in a digital way. So I'm going to show you just a quick video of what this kind of looked like. Uh, and again, this is, I'm going to show you this lab, essentially, right? So the first, more or less the first two pages of this igneous rock lab and, and what it looked like in a digitized format. If I can, uh, is this going to play? Let's see, will you play? There we go. So <clears throat> there is the same introduction we had. You know, this was, uh, we had a drop down here. We had chose the textures. And then you can see over here, we've got uh, the option of actually checking your answer. And I've already pre-checked it there. Uh, but the students would get a, a very slight penalty just so they wouldn't just check, 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 check. And here are the individual rock samples that they can look at in their kits. And again, they're matching these up with things. So when I get in behind the scenes here, this is what the programming actually looked like using Moodle as an interface. And I want to note that if you wanted to, you can have them not just marked right or wrong, but you can actually give hints as, as feedback. And I'll be honest, I didn't do a lot of this because it took a lot of extra time. I started doing it at the beginning and then I just ran out of time in terms of the, the program. But you can actually have direct hints coming out. 
Uh, in addition to just drop down kind of fact-based things, you can also have short answer questions. And again, these are still kind of fact-based things, right? So right, wrong, one word answer. So this one, they looked at a big pegmatite and they had to identify three minerals uh, in a pegmatite. Uh, so there's some examples. Here's the sedimentary rock lab. And again, going through sorting and they're looking at actual specimens, bear in mind. This is just what they would enter if they were uh, looking with a paper and pen. I can also put media in there, color images instead of black and white images. New Brunswick people will appreciate that, uh, some Elbertite. And then for this one, they actually had all of the identification. Uh, they didn't have to write anything down. They had a drop down list for all of the options they had. So that's one, uh, those are some examples of, of what it actually looked like in practice. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so for a number of the labs, we also gave them a supplemental sheet or a couple of sheets where they did their short answer questions. Now, this could have been accommodated, but especially since, as you'll see in a second, some of the students were using phones, uh, typing away a short answer is just not really useful in a phone. But also you can't draw easily, et cetera. So for many of these digitized labs, we gave them uh, at least one sheet where they did some, some short answer questions and they would go back and forth between the two. Okay, so really what we're digitizing here, the main thing, are those straight up factual right wrong questions. I mean, it is X, it is Y, okay? So that's what it looked like. All right, so in practice, what was this like? So this year, I actually didn't teach any of these labs. Normally I'm hands on with the labs, um, my colleague, Dr. Lillian Navarro, uh, was a uh, was the lab instructor who oversaw all of the engineering geology uh, labs this year. So she facilitated them all. She made some small changes in real time uh, of what the labs that I had built out. Five of them were totally digital uh, or were digital with you know some component, and then three were all paper. And so I asked her to just tell me what was your experience like as an instructor. And, and now I'm just going to quote what she gave me. So contrary to expectations, Social interaction among students wasn't strongly affected by online entry. Students tended to partner up in groups of two or three, share, check, argue about responses. That's good. That's uh, how they normally interact with paper labs. Using a hybrid approach lessened my marking load. Student performance didn't change drastically in online versus paper assignments. I spent more of my time supporting students to work through lab resources and engage in critical thinking process during the completion of their online questions. The design of online assignments and modules was crucial and time consuming. An instructor must have a clear learning outcomes in mind and incorporate student reflection and discussion. And I had to handle some panic situations, crashing, freezing, losing answers, uh, things that arose during labs or submission. So I also said, you know, what was the student feedback like, right? Verbally, what did they tell you while they were doing? And she says, overall students expressed positive opinions about using their laptops and digital devices to work and submit lab assignments. This is the only lab course that they had such experiential learning approach. One student expressed it was a great way to integrate geology and learning uh, into the labs, technology into the labs. A few occasions, students ran into glitches, bugs, and other issues when taking the online lab assignments. And even though tablets were offered, all students used their own devices. So that's the, the feedback from the actual facilitator uh, doing the work. But what did the students say when, when we asked them anonymously? So at this point, I, I went, I got REB, I got ethics board approval, and I, and I conducted a, a small scale a study at the end of the course, incentivized with a, a little bonus grade. And this was part of an ongoing study I have of a bunch of things that we do in class, but I added in a few questions specifically about this. And the response was good. We had 30 students, of which 22 completed this portion, so a 73% response uh, to this. So the first question was uh, for, uh, for the labs, the digital ones, how did you actually do them? 17 of the students did it on their own personal laptops. Five of them did it on their phones. Of those who did it on their phones, 80% of those students said it actually was sufficiently large, which honestly, I would not want to complete these on a phone. You can do it. Moodle integrates pretty well into a phone, uh, but uh, I was surprised that the people who chose to do it on the phone were actually happy with the experience, but they were. So that, that says something. Um, Followed up and asked them, okay, so how did you feel this impacted your learning? So the immediate feedback, that was one of our goals, right? Did you, do you agree that that helped your learning? 77% said, yep, we agree or strongly agree it helped my learning. And what about, uh, what about uh, getting your grade at the end of the lab? Immediate feedback and the overall results. Did that help your learning? 81% agreed, yep, or strongly yup, with another 10% saying somewhat yup, somewhat agree. And finally, what about the format itself? Did you find it intuitive to use, right? I found, so the question, I found the entry formats easy to use. 
76% agreed or strongly agreed. They found the, the interface easy to use. Another 10% somewhat agreed. So this is all this is all very encouraging in terms of you know their experience of it. So I went a little bit further and I said, okay, what was the main benefit of each method? So they could say a benefit each one. I have not said you have to have one thing or the other. And the responses there for digital labs, the main feedback, uh, 10 of the 17 people who actually answered the question in a way that made sense, a few of them uh, got confused or just said no comment, et cetera. Uh, 10 of the 17 said that immediate feedback was the most important, right? Uh, some of them liked that they could actually bring it up easily and review it later on with phones, et cetera. It was faster, it saves paper. Only one person said it saved paper. For paper labs, the uh, the most common uh, benefit they saw was that they thought that the actual act of writing things out might boost their understanding or memory. And I have no way of validating whether that's a real concern, but it is actually one that I had. Uh, three thought it was easier to study from, that they could just pull out their paper and look through as they needed to, rather than opening it up and looking and trying to interface with uh, with a, a web uh, web program. They liked that they could make drawings, that they could write out longer answers, etc. One person had an equity concern about access to technology, uh, closer to the format of the exam, etc. So this is just open response, whatever you could say. And again, they had the option of saying what was best for both of them. Okay. Now. This is the final, I think, the most important question, which is overall, how would you prefer to uh, complete labs like in the future? So they've had access to both of them. Remember that half of their labs essentially were some hybrid of digital and uh, uh, digital and paper, uh, paper supplemental, and then said mostly digital. And then three of the labs were completely, completely paper and pen. So if you look at the breakdown here, you can see that there is a number of students who really preferred paper uh, and a more people who preferred uh, or somewhat preferred the digital entry. But of course, as instructors, when we're thinking about what we're going to do, as long as people don't mind it, then if there are benefits that we see to doing it, it's something we can do. So when you break it down to the group who are either neutral on the interface or prefer digital, Almost three quarters of the class either didn't have a preference at all or preferred the digital interface, which was uh, really kind of validating for me. So I went a bit further and I gave them the opportunity to just open response. Uh, what do you, why, why explain why you preferred one or, or the other? And here the answers were actually really thoughtful. And I'm only gonna show you two because they so closely validate my motivation that it was really heartening. There were other ones in there. A few people had concerns about uh, you know about uh, uh, about some aspects uh, of it. They were fairly minor, actually. Overall, the written responses, and I can share them with all if you guys are interested, were very positive. Some people said it's student preference, whatever you want to do is good, etc. But I'm going to show you just two responses here. The first one is, as the digital multiple choice, uh, as the digital multiple choice doesn't need to be marked, it saves the instructor time. Boom, good. And they can be more efficient in correcting other parts of the lab. It was nice to know my remarks immediately. It was an easy way to keep track of all the lab information in one place for studying the lab exam. I enjoyed the online labs and thought they were well done. Another student. Five minutes, Jason. Oh, no worries at all. Yeah, I'm just about. This is my second to last slide, so I'm good. Uh, the uh, the second student said, "This was the first time I've done a lab where I was given immediate feedback, and I think it really helped me learn." If I'm being honest, graded labs that are handed back even the next week, I tend not to look at because sometimes you don't remember what you did in that lab, even with fast grading turnaround. So often I don't review them and figure out why I got the wrong answer. Whereas with the immediate feedback, it's stuck in my head where I'd go wrong and where I'd learn the right answer. Now, if I wanted to bribe students to, <laughs> to validate my research and to validate my, you know, my, my preconceptions, I, I couldn't have gotten them to write uh, you know, a shorter abstract of why I wanted to do this. So to have the students say this back to me without uh, prompting was, was really, really validating. So, okay, so what, did it, what, did, what are the conclusions? And again, this was a, both a small scale study, it was 30 students, but also it was a mix of things. We didn't just give them one kind. You know, what I was giving them in terms of digital, uh, digital entry evolved over time, depending on how much time I was making these things. So I was desperately overwhelmed with work, right? And making what I could. But the bottom line is that this seems to work in practice, that both students and instructors see benefits. That said, and there's always a that said, it really took me a lot of time to make these things. Uh, and if I did it again, I'd definitely spend time in the summer. I was trying to make them in real time, and it was, it was a lot of work. The other thing is, is Moodle as an interface for doing this, or LMS, is obviously great because it integrates immediately to our grade book. The students are already going there for other reasons, et cetera. I know how to program in there. 
but Moodle is super clunky for, uh, for modifying and editing quizzes, which is how these things were actually built using the quiz activity. So they're pretty hard to edit and revise. This is not an ideal uh, way of programming them, but it's very easy, it's readily available. Some of the elements absolutely should be done on paper. So, you know, drawing exercises, so, you know, uh, theoretical answers, et cetera. And that's where, that, that's where that supplemental sheet, I think, really comes in. I don't think a full replacement, but for those yes, no kind of questions, yeah, absolutely. I thought it really worked. And 100%, I think this is worth to continue to develop, right? To continue honing this in and figuring out how to make this work. Perhaps uh, supply them all with, uh, with you know, a reasonably large size tablet so everyone has exactly the same interface, those sorts of modifications I can make. So that is the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you guys, and I will take any questions you've got.